All right, class number two, evaporators. All right, so in this series of videos, we are going to learn and describe the functions of an evaporator. We're going to explain temperature and evaporator pressure difference, or TD. This is a little bit different than what you're used to when you're measuring uh, delta T in an air conditioner. We'll look at the different types of evaporators that you find in refrigeration applications. We are going to go over latent heat, sensible heat, and superheat. It's critical that you know these for refrigeration if you don't know them already for air conditioning. We'll explain the uh, relationship between um, the temperature differential, or TD, the temperature difference, and humidity. And then this is the real important part of commercial refrigeration is the evaporator defrost methods. This is where commercial refrigeration is quite a bit different than residential comfort cooling. All right, so the function of the refrigeration system, again, is to transfer heat from one place to another, and specifically a place where it's not wanted to a place where it really doesn't matter. The evaporator, evaporator's job in this um, system is to absorb the heat from the space where you don't want the heat. In this case, it'd be our freezer or refrigerator. So we have the warm air comes into the evaporator coil in the cooler or the freezer and of course the cool air comes out. The one thing I want to make note of here is the freezer and cooler coils differ considerably in in construction as far as the space between the fins go. The coolers and freezer coils have larger gaps between these fins than a residential air conditioning system does. It's because these coils operate at temperatures below freezing and they start to frost up and if they're really close together they ice up rather quickly. Okay so just a quick review of evaporators. Originally they were just pipes um, with fins on them and I have seen just some older refrigeration system with just pipes especially for like a pastry cooler where it has just a pipe that gets cold and uses a gravity and convection no fans whatsoever. So then fans are used to increase the heat transfer and uh, move a more heat across the coil rather than convection. And then multi-circuit coils were developed to increase the refrigeration capacity with and without increasing pressure drop. And we'll go over and take a look at these here in just a sec. Okay, gravity or con convection coil. This is a coil that has is a regular refrigeration coil for a cooler. And you'll notice the fin spacing here is, is quite a bit wider than you're used to seeing. No fan whatsoever, so it's just this coil begins to cool down and cold air falls and falls down into the cooler. And these here are the um, condensation pans, so when the coil starts to drip, it catches the uh, condensation and drains it out of the drain. You don't see these very often. Uh, coated prep table coil. This is for your sandwich and pizza prep tables where they keep the product in canisters and they make the sandwich right there on top of the cooler. These are co coated with a special coating because you usually have tomatoes or and or ketchup in there and other vegetables and the acids especially from the tomatoes and ketchups really eat away at the coil so these are usually coated with, this, with uh, a coating to protect the copper and the aluminum fins. And then, of course, just a fan coil unit uh, that increase air transfer and heat transfer across the coil. And the, and the common evaporator construction is just copper tubing with aluminum fins. Again, the, the wider spacing you'll see here. We talked about the multi-circuited coil. This is to decrease pressure drop. So what this is basically is one large coil with a, a common return and then it has different supply tubes, capillary tubes going into the, each circuit of the of the coil. So you you would have one, two, three, four separate circuits on this coil with one common return. Okay, then you have your stamped or your plated evaporator. These are used mostly in um, ice machines. So, and we'll go over ice machines in a later lesson, but it's just 
the refrigeration that the refrigerant flows through the stamped or the plate here and it cools this entire plate and with an ice machine that flow the water over the top to freeze the water. And then we have the reach-in and walk-in coolers and freezers. And here's an example of a reach-in evaporator coil. This would be, um, and fan, this would be rather small, just maybe 8 or 10 inches across here to, to uh, cool a reach-in refrigerator. And then a walk-in evaporator for a, a larger walk-in cooler, so it's going to have multiple fans with a large evaporator coil. And this would be a low velocity, something that you might see in a meat cutting room where it's not blowing a lot of air across it. All right, so that ends our discussion of evaporators. Just a quick review. We're going to get into more detail here in just a bit.